Right, I think there was a problem with the audio last time. So let's see, right there, some of you have joined again. Sorry, so, sorry about that. I did talk about uh, how it wasn't easy for, uh, for Roger Federer and, uh, and, and Rafael Nadal. I mean, for them, getting a first serve in seemed to be much, uh, much, much, more, uh, much more difficult. This, this was so tough for them. Right, so now looks like look, looks like we're on, guys. Uh, just just give me a wave. I, I see a couple of waves coming in, and if you can hear me, just say yes, I can, because the last time I logged on, uh, I couldn't hear. I was trying something else. Thanks, Arjun Dot uh, for saying that that you can indeed hear me. Right, so yes, as I was telling you last time, this is the first time that uh, I'm doing an Instagram live, feeling a bit like a batsman playing playing on a different wicket, but uh, I guess you have no choice. You've got to get used to it, and so. So here I am. If, if everyone else can do it, I guess uh, I, I guess I can too. Uh, what I, what I've been up to in this lockdown? These are unprecedented times. These are difficult times, guys. So please please stay safe. Don't try and uh, don't, don't try and overdo things a little bit. I mean, if that liquor shop opens one day, it's all right. You can still be at home, can't you? Uh, yeah. So I've, I've started doing Crick bus in in conversation. I enjoyed doing the ones that you've seen so far. Uh, Dinesh Karthik was uh, was excellent. Uh, I, I did want David Warner actually. I was very keen to do David Warner because uh, um, he, he's, he's such an unusual person. He was called the Bull. He was called the Reverend. I absolutely enjoyed talking to him. Much like you know, it, it reminded me a little bit of talking to Andrew Simons. I did one with Andrew Simons many years ago. It was so much fun and he opened up. I was able to see a side to him that not many people had, and uh, I, I thought. Uh, it was a little bit like that with uh, with Warner as well, and um, yeah, I've, I've done a, I've done a few more too. So that was fun. Dwayne Bravo is always always great fun. But now it's it's literally you and me. So um, yeah, one of the TikTok star now says Rahul Oja. Yes, uh, but I I don't think I I'll I'll be able to do that. There've been a few people telling me to get onto TikTok, but uh, uh, no, maybe I just have to find my way of doing TikTok. But uh, otherwise, uh, I'll be very tough. So, right. Uh, Arian Jain says, "Will we get a Castrol Active Champion Series again, um, guys? At Cricket, if you're uh, if you're watching in, that there's a question there for you, <laughs> guys. At Castrol, if you're watching in, there's a question for you because uh, Castrol had enabled that, so that 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 was the reason. Okay, I'm going to take a couple of questions as 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 many more start to come in. By the way, I was quite overwhelmed. There were about six seven hundred questions here on Instagram, some more on Twitter, but." Uh, uh, there's some interesting ones that I actually wrote down. Here you go. Wrote down some. My old little notepad. Always carry one with me. The Bala and the Beautiful. Are you in? The Bala and the Beautiful. Give us a wave if you are, man. Uh, he says, post-COVID-19, it's a long question. I've just picked out little parts. Same enthusiasm for test cricket. Will people sit in a crowd for five days? Will COVID be the final nail in the coffin? Um, well, I'm assuming your name is Bala. Well, Bala and the Beautiful. Whatever your name is. Um, I don't think so. You know, I've, I've heard obituaries written about test cricket for a long time. Yes, when we come back, I don't know when, but when we do come back, a lot of the, uh, as, as the national bodies, the state bodies will be so short on, on funds that they will want to play the form of cricket that will get them their money back the fastest. It will be a financial decision. Uh, having said that, Australia are very, very keen that India play them over five test matches. That's also because Australia is a big test match viewing place, as, as is England. But I see more and more, uh, certainly for the first year or so, as people try to recover their money, I see more T20 cricket, I see more franchise cricket. And the reason behind that is that uh, each, uh, each national body will want its own money. Conducting an ICC T20 uh, earns the ICC some money, earns the national body some money. But conducting an IPL, for example, or conducting a big bash earns the local country much more. So, uh, so I, I, that, that's what I foresee happening. I foresee a lot more short form cricket, a lot more T20 cricket, a lot more franchise cricket as well. Uh, Uddhav Chitre says, when are you going to do uh, an Insta live in, in Marathi? Karu Agdish Uddhav. सध्या एवढा कॉन्फिडन्स नाही पहिल्यांदा करतोय ना पण एकदा नक्कीच करू आणि मजा येईल माझ्या बऱ्याच मित्रांनी पण सांगितलंय कधी मराठीत पण करा तरी दिवशी मराठीत पण करा हिंदी मे कर लेते एक बार जो जो भी जबान आती उस जबान मे कर लेंगे uh and i'll take one more before i start taking all the, all the questions that are coming in delighted that, uh, that that there are so many coming in and this is a question that's uh, been occupying a lot of attention these days like occupying a lot of minds these days raising a lot of uh, thoughts these days and three different people have asked them actually <laughs> the funny part is i can't read my own handwriting well, one of them is uh, ak hunger 88 i hope i've got it right uh 
plus Utkarsh, Vivek, Pranav Roy, and, and it's all about legalizing, as they call it, uh, as they call it, ball tampering. Shane Warne has said that maybe you must have a weighted ball that's, that makes the two halves of the ball unequally weighted so that there's something in it for the batsman. They're talking about a resin. I think Kukabara has come up with one as well, where uh, they say give it to the umpire from time to time, take it and, uh, and, and polish the ball so you can... I find this whole thing very interesting, I must admit, because it's not that long ago that if bowlers put some resin on their trousers and then started polishing the ball there, if they tried to use some of these substances, the umpires came down heavily on them, ball tampering was a huge issue, and all of a sudden we are saying, um, hang on, let's, let's legalize this so that uh, the bowlers have something to play for. Now, my view on this is also a little different. If you have two teams playing a cricket match, I'm, uh, I'm assuming that they would have uh, had two COVID uh, tests, that they would have finished their 14-day quarantine. You're not going to get them on the ground. Otherwise, if everyone's been through quarantine, everyone's been through COVID, then I, I don't see an issue. I don't see the need to do all this. We can just play cricket absolutely normally. Where do you stop then with this uh, well, artificial polishing of the ball? Uh, Richard Hadley had said many, many years ago, therefore, why don't you then allow someone to scuff up one side of the ball. Do you keep something in the umpire's pocket then and say, actually, I don't want to shine it now. I'll scuff it a little bit. I know shining's been the more accepted part, but this could lead to so many other things that uh, I'm, not, I'm not in favor of it just now because we don't know where it's going to end. Uh, I think just keep polishing it the way you do. So there you are. That was... Uh, uh, that, that, that was my thought on that. Many more questions coming in. How can I do commentary with you? She says, she vitician. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't know, actually. Uh, I, I, I'm not on the side, that side of the business where, uh, where people actually select com commentators. But keep trying, keep trying. Nowadays, with digital media, you can do your own blogs. You can do your own video blogs. TikTok's making stars out of people. Instagram is making people like me go weak in the knees and get a bit nervous. So you can, you can start. You never know what happens. Uh, some of you are sending a request to be on the live video. Just join in. It's, uh, as I get used to it, we'll do, uh, we'll do a lot more. Here's an interesting one, actually. I am GSK. He says, I'm GSK. Are you in? Uh, uh, okay, before that, Jay Vardhan says, what's my view on the upcoming Australia series? Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I think a lot depends on where COVID leaves us. Uh, I live in Mumbai and uh, we've not quite had that much success. The number of cases are growing up. No one knows if there's a second win. No one knows how much physical distancing has helped. So I don't know where we will be in August, September. I'd love the series to go on. I love going to Australia. I know that when you go to Australia, you get very good cricket. Uh, Smith back, Warner back, Labus Kachni now in to be a, uh, now in as a very good number three. It'll be a lot more competitive than it was last time. So certainly hope it is. Australia, on the other hand, are doing pretty well. Uh, I think South Australia haven't had a single case. They had this uh, unusual, uh, unusual solution, didn't they? Where they said if it comes to that, we'll play all five Test matches at the Adelaide Oval, the new hotel that's open there, and we'll play there. Uh, I don't think we need to go that far and hopefully by November, December it will clear. So I hope we can do that. They want five test matches. Uh, I wouldn't mind there being five test matches. India, Australia, India, England. Australia, England, the three axis, uh, the, the three major powers playing five test series. That's not a problem. Uh, there's a lot of questions coming in about Rohit Sharma. Gaurav just asked one and I think I had, I had a few more here. Yashke Mehta, Santosh Chetri. Some of you had asked questions whether it's time to give... Uh, a full-time white ball captaincy to, to Rohit Sharma. And whether indeed I'm in, uh, in favor of split captaincy. Now, I did, an, uh, I did a program with Sean Pollock and Elmer Schmidt on, uh, on the ICC channel. And we, had a, we didn't have much time there. So let me explain in full what I had because, because some of you didn't quite, uh, uh, didn't quite like my response on why I wanted just one captain. First of all, I think Rohit's an outstanding captain. Uh, anybody who delivers four IPLs in seven years, and IPL is a very, very tough tournament. Uh, the standard of cricket in IPL is uh, is higher than that of many bilateral uh, uh, T20 internationals. 
So to deliver four IPLs in seven years is fantastic. There's a, there's a new side to Rohit Sharma. He's far, he displays far more empathy. He's far more cool. He's much cooler. Uh, I think he's far more secure with where he is. He's batting beautifully. But look at it this way. Uh, Rohit Sharma has just come back into test match cricket. He's done really well, but he hasn't had huge experience of playing overseas. Now he goes overseas, he's not doing too well. Suddenly his place in test match cricket comes under scrutiny. He's wondering, will Virat pick me? Will he not pick me? Next day, I'm capped. I'm, I'm captain and Virat's looking at me. What happens to someone like Kuldeep Yadav? Who does he look up to as captain? So I'm not in favor of two captains when both of them are in contention to be in both sides. Uh, I remember Australia did had Ponting and Steve Waugh, but when Ponting became ODI captain, Steve Waugh is no longer playing ODI cricket. So uh, they, they didn't have these two different power centers. Owen Morgan is captain of uh, England's limited oversight, but he's not in contention for a test game. Uh, Joe Root is not in the T20 side. So can you imagine a situation where Morgan's looking up to Root and saying, do you think I'll be in the test team tomorrow? And Root's looking up to Morgan saying, will I be in the T20 team tomorrow? And I, I don't think that's good for relationships. And that is why I said that you must have one power center, especially if both people involved are likely to play all forms of the game. Uh, I think bowlers get familiar with one kind of captain on tour. If one person's captain one day, one another. So I know it's been a long response, but uh, I, I just thought that uh, it, it needed that, uh, that clarification. So, right, Omkar says... Uh, when will the season start next year if the IPL is played in October? First of all, Omkar, we don't know if the IPL is going to be played in October. We don't know what's going to, what the situation is going to be in October. We don't know if this dreaded COVID has gone by then. We don't know if there's a second win. We don't know if we've had enough uh, quarantine time from it. So as of now, we know absolutely nothing. What we do know, and we can just uh, create scenarios really, is in case that T20 World Cup in October, November in Australia doesn't happen, and it's looking really bleak at the moment, in case that doesn't happen, uh, I've been saying this for a long time, the first option would be to move it to India, but India is at the moment doing worse than Australia on that front. But should the situation get better by September, uh, then I see India's cricket board, the BCCI, making a very strong pitch to having the IPL in October, November for many reasons. One is, of course, it's a fantastic tournament, but it brings you 70, 75% of, of your income. That's not something to be scoffed at because uh, look, the England Cricket Board has just said if the whole season's washed out, they'll be 380 million pounds behind. Uh, Cricket Australia is cutting jobs left, right and centre. Victoria Cricket Association has just cut some jobs. Justin Langer's on 20% of his salary. There's a lot of jobs going. This is the peak income time for Australia with India next year, England coming along. So there has to be a financial decision for the well-being of the game. I know a lot of you will say, ah, there he goes again, talking finances rather than cricket. So I think there's, there's a lot to be said in favour of having that IPL. And then you can have another IPL next summer. And hopefully by next summer, uh, all these viruses and the places they come from have, have, have learned a lot. So yes, Abhishek says India versus Australia uh, will, will be a good contest. Extremely Kaushik says RCB or CSK. You know, you, know, you get that lovely length wall outside off, you let it go. Will this long break affect the form of players, says claustrophobic guy. First of all, claustrophobic guy, stay claustrophobic for a while, stay indoors, don't try and get out. Uh, but yes, it will. I think it will affect uh, the bowlers much more than the batsmen. It will affect the fast bowlers much more than it will affect the spinners because they've got to get fit to bowl fast again. You can do all your training, but just that run up, that leap, that landing, the ankle taking the load again, their force going through the ankles, the shins into the thighs is not easy. So I, I in fact, read somewhere, it might have been Jimmy Anderson, but I'm not sure, said that it'll require three to four weeks at least for the fast bowlers to get match fit. So if you say we're ready to play cricket in July, I don't see the fast bowlers being re really fit to play by end of early August at least. So yes, it will take time. The batsmen will come back faster, but I think the fast bowlers will take a long time to uh, come back. Uh, my current favorite batsman, there's loads. One word about MS Dhoni, says Advait, Advait the Zankar. Okay, maybe that's, that's, what, that's uh, what it was, Advait. Uh, you know, if you had asked me what are the three things I'm looking forward to the most from this year's IPL, very close to the top of that list would have been to watch MS Dhoni play because there's just something about Dhoni. You never know what's going on in his mind. Dhoni is not the kind of guy to turn up if he's not fit. I'd said many years ago that uh, if Dhoni wasn't ready, if Dhoni thought his time had come, there'd be no grandstanding, he'd just walk away. But Dhoni came back to Chennai. He came back very early. 
uh, I think Suresh Raina had tweeted, I think a couple of others had said that uh, he was hitting the big shots, he was looking like he was in touch, he was very hungry. If all that is indeed true, then I don't know whether he was ambitious, but maybe he was giving himself one shot. But I won't be surprised, and I've said that before, I won't be surprised if Dhoni says, listen, I've had my run with, with India and... I'll be blocking the path for a lot of youngsters. KL Rahul is just coming good. Rishabh Pant will come good in T20 cricket. Dinesh Karthik is making a case in T20 to be a finisher again if he has a good IPL. My feeling is that the relationship between CSK and MS Dhoni runs very deep. And uh, a couple of trick bus conversations that I've done, uh, one with Dwayne Bravo, Dinesh Karthik, a lot of them, a couple of others that have been recorded that will come out shortly. The manner in which they talk about Dhoni and CSK is, is very heartwarming. So my gut feel is, and nobody knows Dhoni, my gut feel is this would have been his, his message to CSK saying, whatever happens, I am coming back to CSK. That, that's, that's just my point of view. But anybody who tries to read Dhoni's mind is trying to achieve the impossible. So someone said, why not Sanju Samson? Indeed, Sanju Samson goes out there, gets runs. I think he's a fabulous young batsman. So look at, the, we've got Sanju Samson. We've got uh, Rishab Pant. You've got KL Rahul at the senior end. You've got Dinesh Karthi. You've got Ishan Kishan. You've got so many uh, batsman keepers or keeper batsmen, depending which way you uh, you call them. So uh, why were Kuldeep and Pant not released to play Ranji Trophy? Maybe that's an old question that's just come up. Rohan Srikumar says the school level quiz competition was an amazing show. Would you want to come back for it? I think I did that for five years and it got to a stage where the children were getting a little too nervous. My ability to handle their sadness, their disappointment in case they lost was, uh, was starting to affect me. Uh, two teams at level are asking the question where one team's going to win and the other team uh, might just lose. It was still days when people used to travel a day and a half by train to come to Delhi in the winter. And I just look at those faces and I'd say, I don't want either of you to lose because they were such lovely kids. And I didn't want either of them to lose. So I started to get a little affected by their sadness in case they lost. And uh, so I thought my time had come. But there's so many youngsters. There's so many fantastic anchors over there. I believe the school quiz should should happen, should continue. Some of you keep sending me messages. The uh, the bonding that took place uh, between, uh, between uh, rivals over there is still alive. I still get... Uh, I still get uh, tweets about that so yeah if, if if it can be done with the same warmth the same happiness uh without screaming without celebrating defeat but understanding each other yeah i think you should but remember if you're doing a school quiz then uh, joy but empathy is also very important for whoever is is going to do it right lots more oh, good to see there's, there's there's a few in there we've done we've done about uh, 17 18 minutes who's my favorite commentator I keep watching quick buzz in conversation uh, but i enjoy working with anybody really there isn't a commentator i don't want to work with or there's someone i'm uncomfortable with the only couple of times i've been a little uncomfortable is because of the aura around a couple of a couple of commentators even now i'm sitting with michael holding i think better be good on this okay the younger commentators it, it, it's a little easier working with shane Warren, very sharp so uh, you've you've Sometimes with people who have an aura around them, if I ever had to do commentary with Tiger Pataudi, I know he's gone very sad, uh, I'd, I'd struggle. So with people that I have or carried that aura, I found it difficult. But otherwise, no, there hasn't been a commentator that uh, I can say I didn't want to work with. So uh, no issues there. A lot of people who, couldn't, who wanted to play for India but couldn't for some reason. What are the other exciting avenues a youngster should look up? And if commentary, what is the roadmap? Now, a lot of cricketers think that it's an easy transition from playing cricket to being in the commentary box. Now, what I will tell them is it's much easier than actually going out and playing cricket. Of that, there's no doubt. There's someone running in at 90 miles an hour. There's someone bowling spin on a turning track. It's, it's not easy. But if you turn up and look upon this as a career that's, that's just given to you, then you will struggle. If, on the other hand, you look at what so many former players have done, uh, and, and some of them have been very good, there's, there's, there's Nasser Hussain, there's Michael Atherton, there's a lot coming from Australia, uh, Mr. Gavaskar himself, Sanjay Ravi in India, a lot of them became very good commentators. A lot of them approached the new profession 
in the manner they would have approached the old profession, meaning they try to understand what, what it required when it came to hosting, they try to understand technology, the medium. Akash Chopra has done it really well, Murli Kartik is on the way. If you're willing to do that, then as a former cricketer, you've got a huge, uh, you've got a huge advantage. If you just turn up, you'll get found out. And I think it was Ian Chappell, not, not my view, I think it was Ian Chappell who said, uh, as a former cricketer, you get two years in the box. As a former captain, you maybe get a third year in the box. After that, it's how well you understand the medium. And there's some fantastic new player commentators coming in, which is, uh, which is nice. I'd like to see uh, a few more very good anchors make the transition into commentary because that served me well. And that is what I would advise a lot of uh, producers coming through as well. Uh, keep room for a caller. A lot of very good young anchors. Let them get into commentary as well. Let them feel their way around. And I'm glad that someone like Jatin is doing that now. Uh, Gautam Bhimani did a fair bit of that. So I'm happy. I'm happy on that. How to be a cricket blogger, says Rahul underscore photos. By the way, uh, I tend to give slightly longish answers. I might, I might miss out on some questions that are scrolling up. So uh, uh, don't, I, I hope you don't mind. It's very easy. I, I don't know the technology behind creating a website or creating your own blog spot, but, but just do that. Uh, start writing, put your thoughts together. You'll realize that it's not as easy as you thought. You'll also realize that facing the camera is not as easy as you thought. So do your own little blogs. If initially keep them private, maybe share them with friends till you're, till you're confident enough and set up your own blog page and um, prepare for your blogs. Don't just sit there and, uh, and go rambling or rant at somebody. Why are we not finding a number four? No reason out why we're not find, finding a number four. Actually talking of number four, where's that question? Uh, I am GSK. I was going to ask that. Why do we lack match winners in the middle order? He said. And I thought it was uh, one of the shortcomings of India at the World Cup that we didn't have a settled number four, number five. I actually have a reason for that. Look at all the best batsmen playing limited overs cricket in India. Where do they want to bat? They all want to bat top of the order. They all want to bat top three. Saurav Ganguly told me once there's no better place, Asha. He said, to bat in white ball cricket than right at the top of the order. You saw that. There was Ganguly, there was Sehwag, there was uh, Tendulkar, of course. There was Gambhir a little after Ganguly. Uh, they were together for a little patch. Everybody wants to bat, bat in the top order. Batting 4-5 is a completely different kettle of fish. Batting 6 is very, very tough. So, if you're looking for a number 4, number 5, then you've got to look at somebody who's actually batting 4-5. Then you cannot measure him in the same, uh, cannot weigh him in the same scales as you weigh number 1, 2, 3. You can't say, but his average is only 34, whereas somebody else's average was, is 45. Because you're playing different roles. Look at how that person plays when he comes in 10 for 2. Look how that person plays when he comes in at 260 for 2. And that's why I had a lot of admiration for Kedar Jadav, by the way. I thought Kedar Jadav had a very, very difficult role to play. And very few people in world cricket played that role as well as Kedar Jadav did. Very tough. So you need to find specialists when you're looking at 4, 5, 6. I'm very happy Shreyas Iyer has come through. I hope he wants to continue batting at number 4. Look how well Ross Taylor is doing at number 4. So, yeah, I think, I think that's one of the reasons. Far too many people, the best players are playing the top order, the best numbers are coming in the top order and suddenly there's no 4-5. And it, it's, it's been an issue. I think Suresh Raina uh, sort of drifted away a little bit. MS Dhoni moved on. I mean, got a little older. So, yes, there is a, there is a gap there. But I think we need to look at 4 and 5 almost as a separate exercise because the top three, you'll always have enough people playing, playing the uh, top three. Why are teams winning less overseas, says Rahul S. It's been a trend for quite some time now. Your thoughts? A uh, couple of thoughts. Uh, I don't know if resilience is, is going down. I don't know if teams are getting starts. I saw a stat, uh, I might have been Deepu at Crickbuzz who sent it to me, 2019, uh, late 2018 and till sort of middle end of 2019 until uh, sort of England's opening pair started to get, deliver some stands, Australia started to deliver some stands. It was the worst time in over 50 years for opening batsmen. When opening batsmen are not delivering partnerships, then it's, it becomes very difficult on all the others. I think if you're a T20 batsman, if you saw what happened to Jason Roy, the first instinct is to go hit through the line. The ball does a lot more. Stuart Broad is an excellent bowler. You don't get bowlers like him or Jimmy Anderson, uh, who are specialist test match bowlers and move the ball around that much. So that, that, is, that is my view, uh, that the uh, see the ball, hit the ball, hit through the line approach in T20 cricket. And the fact that if someone's batting an entire session, like my friend Akash Chopra used to bat, Go in at lunch, 25, 30, not out. Doesn't matter. You've done your job. He, that's what he did so well in the, in, the, in the test matches that he played. 
maybe that that's one of the reasons. So these are two or three reasons uh, I I think that uh, we are not we are, teams are not playing that well that well away. Bowling is bowling is excellent though. How would you accommodate Gill and Shaw? Says Super Team in the shorter formats. I don't know. Uh, Prithvi Shaw is such a good player when he gets going. Everybody I speak to, I don't know if you saw my crick buzzing conversation with Dinesh Karthik. Uh, every time I spoke to him about Shubman Gill, he just said it's a question of when rather than if. So uh, I just think he's got to have a breakthrough season. But Shubman Gill is to me in the middle. Uh, he's, he's opening a lot, but I think a three four is the next uh, next cap of the rank. Here's, here's an interesting question I pulled out actually because I thought some of you might be interested in my view on that. Sudarshanam underscore seven says, is it imperative to be witty if you're a presenter? No, no. If it doesn't come naturally to you, don't even try because uh, I'll, I'll tell you there's advantages of smiling, of laughing, of seeing the positive inside and believing that you're blessed. Because when people smile on a telecast or a broadcast like I'm doing now, the person who's watching tends to, without realizing, start to mimic that. I mean, you look at you look at anchors who are forever angry and shouting, and even when they're delivering good news, and when you're watching, you're also a bit like that. You're wondering what's coming next. When there's someone who's smiling, you tend to smile as well. So uh, I think being pleasant is far more important than being witty. Uh, it helps if you look a certain way on television, but I don't think it's mandatory. Look at me. I, I, I was able to get, have a decent run myself. But uh, it's, it's important to be comfortable. It's important to look, to be earthy, nice, be decent. And I think the word that my producer, who I owe a great debt to, Ray Hume, used was warmth. I think you must transmit warmth through the screen into the homes of people that you're privileged to be in. So warmth, remember. So if you can do all that, yes, you can be a presenter. If you can be witty as well, nothing like it, but you don't have to be. Mm. And one last one before I pick up a couple more questions. I think we've been on for a while already. Uh, once Hardik is ready, says uh, Trinab underscore 12, when Hardik is ready and fit, do will Chahal and Kuldeep get together? Will Jadeja return his place? Re uh, now, uh, uh, retain his place. Jadeja came in at number seven. And Hardik was playing number seven because Kedar Jada was giving you a few overs at number six. Hardik Pandya batting at seven with six batsmen who do not bowl and four others who do not bat. The pressure on Hardik Pandya is too much. He's just coming out of a major injury. He has to be for a while at least the sixth bowler. So if Hardik is batting seven, then you need someone who can bowl at, at, at six. That's not happening. I think Hardik Pandya's future is number six. If Hardik is batting at number six the same for the same reason you cannot have five people who don't bat after him. But look at Jadeja's numbers in white ball cricket. In the last 12-18 months, they've been sensational. So my view is Hardik Pandya 6, Jadeja 7, depending on who's playing well, who's fitter, in form, Deepak Chahar, Bhuvneshwar Kumar at number 8. Then you've already got two seamers, depending on the condition, you play two wristies and Jadeja, or you play a wristie and Jadeja and play three seamers and, and Hardik Pandya. But uh, uh, in long term, Hardik Pandya has to be your, your number six. Uh, Shikesh Bangar says different capital in different formats. I think, uh, I think I've think i answered that. I think I've taken all the questions that uh, I had prepped for. Actually, here's an interesting one. Uh, Arya underscore Jairam zero zero. Are you there? Uh, I'm assuming your name is Jairam, by the way. Uh, it says, how do I handle a generation gap? That's, uh, that, that's very nicely put, actually, because it's not one generation, it's not two. There's a third generation, fourth generation gap. Uh, coming up shortly. Uh, my, my approach is to respect every generation that comes and I've said it so many times I enjoy seeing this new generation coming up. In my profession I see these young anchors coming up, so much talent, so much ability, a lot of the female presenters coming through, there's some excellent uh, uh, female commentators that have come through on the world stage, I'm looking forward to some of them coming through in India as well. So there's, there's so much talent coming through. I see, we go out at the winning way. My wife and I do these corporate sessions. I see a lot of talent in young India. You've got to respect that talent. You ca if you keep telling them, you know what things were in our time, they switch off immediately. So ask them what they think, respect them, encourage them. And then I think the generation gap becomes a release, except that they start calling me sir and uncle. And at, at that point, okay, guys, that, that, that's enough. Uh, yeah, someone says Ridhima Patak. I should mention. Yeah, Ridhima was Ridhima was excellent too. I thought she was a she's she's, she's a good presenter. Uh, 
keep the life for 24 hours you now. Thanks. There's a lot of you coming in as well. Uh, any comments on MSK Prasad Selection Committee? Very easy uh, from the outside. What I liked about MSK Prasad Selection Committee was that there were quite a few players who made the transition from India A to India. When they were not doing okay for India, they went back to India A. And I thought uh, the manner in which they picked India A teams was very good. Uh, you saw Mayank Agarwal made the transition quite easily because he got a lot of India A experience. So I think the way they picked India A teams was excellent. When it comes to picking the national side, I think there's a huge input from captain and coach because they need to be comfortable with the players who are in there. Sometimes the selectors will pick players. If the captain and coach are not comfortable, they don't play them. And then that can lead to unfortunate situations as we've seen a couple of times. The one thing I will hold against them uh, and, and I, I, I thought MSK is a good man. The one thing I will hold against them is that number four, number five. They should have stayed with somebody at four and five and not had India going into big games still uncertain of four or five. So I thought largely very good job. You know, it's very easy to blame selectors. Now, remember, you're MSK Prasad and you're sitting with Virat Kohli and Ravi Shastri. You've got to, you've got to take their views into matter. They're strong personalities. It's not easy being a selector. So uh, I, I have a lot of sympathy, but I think the role of a selector is very important. Uh, I don't think a selector needs to have played 100 test matches, but he needs to have the courage of his conviction to stand up and say, no, this is a player I want to pick. Uh, what about a one-day wicket keeper, Vinayak? I think we've, we've talked about that. Uh, 534. How, how much longer, guys? Ambati Raidu. There you are, Bakshi Path. Ambati Raidu. Ma Raidu Garki. Uh, what do I say to my Raidu Garu? I uh, a lot of time for him. His career was up and down and not easy at all. Had to fight his way back. First Mumbai Indians, then Chennai Super Kings. Make the most of every opportunity that he got. Uh, I thought that he must have in his mind believed he's going to be in the World Cup side. And then when he went through a little period when he was short on confidence, that was the time I thought he needed an arm around his shoulder. But now, remember, I'm looking at it from 100 yards away. I met him a couple of times. We speak in Telugu, by the way, when we meet. Uh, and I thought he was a little low on confidence. But you don't know what the captain and coaches think about him. Did they think, ah, oh, no, I don't think he's ready to be in that position. But... Uh, uh, I, I just thought he needed an arm around his shoulder. He needed a lot more encouragement, and I think he might have, uh, he might have uh, come into that role. Maybe Shreyas Iyer a little earlier, but yeah, I have a lot of sympathy for Ambati Raidu. Raidu Garu, me runter narante me temper kasa duolanga petende. In Kamariyo sir comeback chende CSK korath kosa harende. Then comment just now. Uh, Bravo once joked about him poking Raidu to get the most out of him. Uh, what's my comment on Morgan saying T10 is going to be the way ahead for the Olympics? Uh, I don't know. I mean, when T20 came around, did we think T20 was going to be as big as this? We don't know. Is T10 going to be even bigger? Unfortunately, we would have got a glimpse with the 100, which was a two and a half hour tournament. Uh, but we don't know that's not going to happen this year. But if you're looking at it purely as an Olympic sport, now a T20 game, even if you run around, get it in time, is a three and a half hour game. How many games can you play? The Olympics are played somewhere else. You don't have that many stadiums. So the crisper the game, the better it is. If you have to take cricket to the Olympics, uh, I've, I must confess I've not thought about it enough. There's a lot of people who say that it will be just the fillip that the game needs. Uh, so maybe you should give T20 a go and maybe at a nation games or commonwealth games uh, a level. And if you find it's a little too long for that format, then maybe give, uh, maybe give T20 a go. Zabir, I am not answering your question. Uh, please give KKR their third title. Uh, by the way, I was due to do a KKR game tomorrow. You know, uh, I was just looking at my at my roster. I was I, I still have an old little small diary, and I write down my uh, my appointments in those. And tomorrow was CSK versus KKR, and yesterday was SRH versus RCB. So there were four fantastic teams. I had a lot of MI games to do. Uh, that's another uh, franchise I love doing. Uh, I'm missing the IPL. I'm, I'm, I'm not denying it at all. I'm missing the IPL enormously. I look forward to the IPL for about a month before it comes. There's something about uh, players from so many different places coming together and playing and the vibes that, uh, that they give out, the, uh, the manner in which they embrace their new franchises. Look how Matthew Hayden became a big hit at CSK. I've just talked about David Warner on Crick Buzz in conversation and Crick Buzz uh, and, and Warner in Hyderabad was, is, a, is a rock star. They call him what? Warner Garu, don't they? Uh, so uh, I, I love seeing that side of, of the IPL. Uh, 
so yeah i, I am missing the ipl i hope uh, i hope you guys are uh dk wants to call me something it, it was very funny actually that uh, you know dinesh karthik's mother in law uh, susan etcheria used to play cricket uh, she was one of the earliest women cricketers in india and i did a game hundreds of years ago i don't know it was probably just the second game i did was england women versus south zone women and i can't remember if she played that game but she was around then and that's what i was trying to tell dinesh and he said if you watch my mother in law play you're a little old but well, that was i was very very young. i got a break in commentary at that at, at 19 So DK is here you oh where yeah, yeah. uh before you go please address GK and DK um I'll tell you this about GK I saw him as a very young music pre- uh, presenter once and I said oh, there's something about this person uh I look for a spark in people whether they are players whether they are producers whether they are young anchors and where gaurav kapoor is gone is, uh, is is fantastic i'm not saying this because then he'll say nice things about me but uh, sometimes i sit in when we're doing crick buzz live and i'm looking at him and saying could i be a different people but yeah he's is is fantastic i'm wearing pink am i supporting <laughs> i need some support no it's just that i haven't worn it for a while you know um, these are these are lockdown times so i went look right at the bottom pile of t-shirts and i pulled and uh, i i pulled out one so so that was good fun so Yeah so there so there you are thank you very much we've been uh, we've been on it for a while uh thank you for joining me there were quite a few of you who joined in and uh, do do send in messages if you liked this kind of uh, uh in- interaction i'd love to to do it again if you think that uh, i share some different kinds of people maybe cricket people maybe non cricket people actually i'm doing uh, conversations with a lot of cricket people on crick buzz but uh, non cricket people if you think uh, if you want to do interesting conversations maybe from the world of music maybe from the world of business i know uh, i i don't know just just let me know but uh, let let's do many more of this uh, of these uh, par in chance session the winning way i know i'll have to ask my boss she decides uh, what how, how much of the winning way we does it so i'll i'll have to uh, I'd have to ask her. So, so thank you guys. Uh, thank thank you for uh, for all the little hearts coming in on the right. It was my first Instagram live. Uh, I was, as I said, I was a little worried. I went back and watched uh, Rafa and Roger fiddling around, and I said, "Yeah, as I said right at the start, that 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 was great fun." So, so so thank you very much, and uh, we'll we'll catch up again. And I'll go and grab myself a nice hot cup of coffee, and you you do that as well. But I will tell you this one thing before we finish: this virus is terrible. do stay in doors as much as you can physical distancing a lot of you watching this understand physical distancing but people around you might not so please spread the message as well physical distancing is critical we've got to flatten the curve we've got to get uh, uh, we we've, we've got to find the better of that uh, of, of that corona virus we cannot afford it to explode in india so do stay stay safe uh, do stay safe do stay in doors as much as you can um if you can work from home nothing like it we need to get businesses up and running because otherwise the side effect of that uh, could be as ba- as bad as the virus itself so uh, yeah do stay safe and uh, we'll we'll meet we'll meet once again do one with virat i don't i don't know i don't know how to get in touch with him so that that that's a good way to end so thank thank you very much ladies gentlemen and uh, we'll take many more questions next time cheers bye